Hey Team Beal, welcome to another edition of Commander's Corner. I'm Senior Airman Benjamin Buganig. I'm sitting here with your Wing Commander, Colonel Larry Broadwell. And this edition, we're going to change things up a little bit, and we're going to actually have some couples in the spirit of Valentine's Day for February. First question for all the couples. When deployments arise, what are some of the ways that you deal with them on either side, whether it's you're the deployed one or you're the one that's at home waiting for them to come home. What are some of the ways that you guys deal with that? We've done a couple deployments, been in the Air Force for a while, but uh, one of the big things that that's not a fun thing to do, but um, go going by the legal office to make sure all that kind of stuff is taken care of, uh, power of attorney, those type of things. Don't be afraid to see what the base has to offer. Uh, the first time I deployed, I was single, and I just kind of did my checklist and left. Um, but the second time, I had a family, and we didn't realize how much the Airman Family Readiness Center had to offer with child care. Once you kind of find out, uh, feel free to invite the spouse to the out-processing briefings and stuff like that. Just make sure you communicate and that you're on the same page, uh, not just with work stuff or Air Force stuff, but everything across the board that you can possibly think of. If, uh, if you're the one staying home, it can get lonely if you don't have any kids, so uh, make sure you have a good support system, make sure you have good friends if you have family nearby. We got a puppy right before he left, so I was very busy. <laughs> Some great answers. Uh, so now we've dealt with the, the whole deployment process. Uh, one of the other sides of that that I know I've heard about a lot is uh, being separated all that time can kind of create a different situation when somebody comes back. So how does the transition from when somebody returns from a deployment, uh, how, how, do you, how do you guys deal with that? Um, for us, I mean, he kind of just comes back in and just watches to see what we're doing. I mean, we do have two older kids. We've got a, a 12 and a 14 year old. And for me, um, we, we got a schedule. We're doing something and we're doing it regularly. He just kind of sits back and then he says, do you want me to take them? Do you want me to take this back here at the house? So it, it, I think it, it is always useful just to kind of hang back a bit and, and see how things are and then step in uh, almost kind of as you get invited to step back in and take over. It can be frustrating when you don't feel like you kind of fit in with the daily routine because your spouse or significant other has been without you for six months and 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 you're kind of imposing on that that routine so it can be a little bit frustrating um, the easiest thing is just to kind of ask or, or watch and it's not it's easier said than done sometimes but hey <laughs> where do these things go now like I, I couldn't I couldn't find my headphones this morning already I, I never had that problem while I was gone um, yeah, and then um, for us, it was just kind of watching and learning what Jen was doing. So when I left, we, uh, we had a one-month-old. So when I first came back, I remember uh, our baby was crying at like 1 in the morning, and then the first thing I wanted to do was just go in his room and pick him up, and then he wouldn't stop crying. So I was like, well, I have to wake Jen up. And uh, so I went into the bedroom, and I was like, hey, Jen, I don't know how to put him back to sleep. And she was like, well, you're not supposed to pick him up at 1 in the morning. You're supposed to let him, like, teach him to go back to sleep, and that's your fault. So now it's all you. So I remember from then on, I was that's like. That's not how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so when John came home, he was always the one to do a lot of the cleaning because he likes things to be just so. So um, I guess from another perspective, it wouldn't be just like sometimes if you just sit back, they might think, oh, well, he's not doing anything. You might get resentful of the fact that you're doing everything and they're kind of observing. So for him, he just kind of jumped in and did what he used to do, and it worked for us. Let's move on from some of the couple-related questions and actually get some questions from our spouses. So recently, there's been some construction occurring uh, near Wheatland Gate. We've been getting a lot of questions. Uh, a lot of people want to know uh, what is the situation with that and when can we expect the Wheatland Gate to be open? You bet. So I... It's, I'm unsure exactly when the gate's going to open back up, uh, but just to let everybody know, uh, there was an inspection of a couple of the bridges en route to the gate, and it was discovered that the bridges were not uh, safe. Uh, they were no longer passable, and so uh, since then, we've developed some engineering solutions, uh, and now we're trying to secure the funding. It's a sizable amount of money. Uh, right now, that, that request has gone through the wing, and it's at the Air Force Installation Mission Supports uh, Command. Uh, and as soon as we get the money, we'll bring the folks out to begin the repairs. The repairs are going to take weeks and weeks, and so uh, I think conservatively, we're two months away. Realistically, we're m more like four or five months away. So it's, it's going to be a while, and I fully appreciate the inconvenience that it causes uh, those that are traveling in from from down in Roseville Lincoln area or from over at Plumas Lake and unfortunately it's just um, it's not safe to travel across that bridge at this time. Another 
uh, gate related question would be the Vassar Lake gate. Uh, it's been running at 24 seven right now. Um, some people are wondering if that's going to continue. Apparently it's been very convenient for them. Uh, is that something we can possibly yeah. see more of? Yeah, well, it, it certainly is convenient for those that are traveling south of the base into the housing area. Mm -hmm. It of course would come with a cost. Right now, our defenders are on 12 hour shifts. They've been on 12 hour shifts for months. Uh, and I'm, I'm, anxious, I'm anxious to get them back on eight hour shifts. What I am interested in doing is once the Wheatland gate opens back up is to do a study to see which of our gates gets used the most and, and maybe adjust the hours some. Uh, another initiative that we're working is extending the hours of the shopette. We've, we've been able to reach an agreement with AFES to extend the hours. Uh, I think it's a little premature to say exactly how late it'll be uh, extended, but it'll be sizable. And what I, the last thing I want to do is close that gate and have the shop ad open. So we'll, we'll be sure to sync up those initiatives so the, the hours of the shop ad will extend uh, to be something about the same as the hours of the gate. We'll see. All right, that does it for this edition of Commander's Corner. Send us a question either through our Facebook, our Twitter, or you can directly email us. And uh, join us next time for Commander's Corner. <laughs>